my name is Heinrich. Today I want to talk to you about 3D Trig. So in 3D Trig we are working with three-dimensional shapes that are mostly usually made up of triangles because trigonometry only works in triangles. Right, so what are our tools that we can use in 3D Trig? So we first up we've got the sign rule and the sign rule I like to call the couples rule. Why? Because we are looking for a angle and side couple. So a couple is an angle and a side that are across from each other. So our, we usually name the sides in terms of small letters, so we use A, B and C, and the angles we use capital letters. So a couple is when the capital letter and the small letter that are across from each other are together, like big B, the angle there, and small b, the side. Right, so how do we use the sign rule? So when you want to use the sign rule, the first thing you've got to look for is a couple. If you don't have a couple, i.e. a side and an angle that are across from each other, you can't use the sign rule. Then you're going to look for the third wheel. So you've got your couple and then you're looking for a bachelor, a third side or a third angle. So there we go, we've got 30 in the diagram there, that's our bachelor. And because we're good people, we're going to go find a partner for our bachelor. So we have to go find the missing piece for that 30, which is the side across from it, which is the x there. And then we can just simplify the equation in order to solve for x. So sine, again, is the couples rule. We're either looking for a couple or we're making a couple. Then we move on to the cos rule. Now the cos rule is a rule that relates three sides in a triangle to only one angle in that triangle. Right, so the cos rule is the rule of peace. So how it's different from the couples rule is if there isn't a couple around you that's arguing, you've got peace. So what do I mean by peace? Is mostly with the cos rule, you need two sides and an included angle that is between those two sides. So well, like we have in the diagram here, we've got C, we've got B, and we've got A. So if you lost one of your sides, the side opposite to your piece, you can go find it again. Similarly, if you lose one of the angles from your triangle and you've got three sides, you can go find one of those angles again using the cos rule, but you can also find the other angle and you can also find the other angle. Right, so our third tool is the area rule. Now the area rule is really, really easy to pick out because it's the only one that has to do with area. So if you have a question that has area in or asks you to find area, the only thing you can use is the area rule. So the area rule is about the area of a triangle and again, in order to use the area rule, we need peace. You need two sides and an included angle. You need an angle between those sides. Right, moving on from that, we have the case where sometimes it's easy, where we don't have to use the sine rule, we don't have to use the cos rule or the area rule. So if you have a right angled triangle, you know that you can use our good old friends sine, cos and tan in order to solve problems relating to the angles and the sides of those triangles. And you know what? Sometimes it is easy. So when it is, don't overcomplicate it. Just use sine, cos and tan. So 3D problems are problems where we're working with a three-dimensional object. So in my hand here, I've got a pyramid, right? It's three-dimensional, it's got length, it's got breadth, and it's got height, so it's got volume, right? But 3D objects are actually only a bunch of 2D objects that have been stuck together. So this pyramid that we have here can easily be broken up to in one triangle, two triangles, three triangles, four triangles, and a square. And we know how to work with triangles, and we know how to work with squares. So it's really easy for us to work with pyramids. So let's see what that looks like in a diagram. 
So you could have a base at the bottom there. There's our square. You have one side, right? The other side, which is the second triangle. You have a third side, which is your third triangle, and a fourth side, which is your fourth triangle. So that shape you see there is just four triangles and a square at the bottom that's been stuck together. So in 3D Trig, we often have a lot of information. We have a lot of sides and squares and angles and all sorts of things, and it might be difficult to know where to start. Right, so you always have to start where you have three pieces of information. Why do I say that? Is your cos rule, sine rule, and your area rule, as well as your functions, sine, cos, and tan, don't work unless you have three pieces of information. So for example, if you have an area and two sides, you can use the area rule in order to find the missing angle. If you have a, let's show it there, if you have a side angle pair, a couple, and you have another side, you can use the sine rule. And if you have three sides, you can use the cos rule in order to find a missing angle. Right. My last tip for you is to find a path from what you have, your three pieces of information where you're going to start, to what you want, which is the triangle or the shape where you are trying to solve for something, an angle or a side or something in terms of the required. So again, start where you have three pieces of information. Right, and then you have to use common sides and common angles in order to get from where you started to where you want to be. So in this diagram, we could start on that side on the right there. Then we want to get to the side on the left. So how do we get there is we see that we've got one side there that connects our one side to the next side, right? And then once we have information about that side, we use another connecting side to get to the side where we want to be. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to get from one side of our triangle to the other side of our pyramid. Right, so that's where we started. You could also use the common side at the bottom there, get information about your square, use the next common side, and then get information about the face of the pyramid that you wanted to get information about. Right, so today I showed you what our tools are to solve 3D trig problems. We've got the sine rule, which is the couples rule, the cos rule, where you're looking for peace, and the area rule, where you're just looking for an area. Then I showed you that 3D problems are really easy because they're just a bunch of 2D problems which are stuck together, and then I showed you a strategy for where to start, which is to look for three pieces of information.